have to look at his output on television, and it was singularly honest. And I think you'd easily dismiss it because it wasn't an honesty that mattered to you and me. It was an honesty that mattered to extremely young people who did not know how the world worked. Just wanted to make little kids, little human beings, feel safe, even if they didn't have all the answers or couldn't understand all the answers. I think what I learned, I think, was that you can you can somehow choose um, you can choose an authentic life. There's nobody in media. There's nobody in television. There's nobody in the I think in the consciousness of of anybody who was born after 19. 56, which is when I was born, that didn't already have an understanding, as well as I think an opinion of, of Mr. Rogers. The beautiful script written by Noah Harpster and Micah Fitzerman Blue was um, in development for a long time. Peter Seraf brought it to me, and um, I was just sort of coming out of my fog of Can You Ever Forgive Me? And I read it, and I was so moved, cried so many times, I had to sign on to do it. Um, and then I brought it to Tom Hanks. So with films through from Die of a Teenage Girl through Can You Forgive Me to this, you seem to be doing some very diverse filmmaking. Is that a deliberate choice or do you see themes in common with all of them? I think it's hard with your own career to be able to kind of take that bird's eye view. For me, it's just whatever's moving me in the moment. I'm a parent right now and I wasn't when I made Diary of a Teenage Girl. Um, and it's changed the types of movies that I want to make. I. Fred Rogers' message of kindness has just felt really important to me in the last few years, so this was the movie I wanted to make now. I, I don't know how it fits in with a larger narrative, but I'll worry about that later. And finally, of course, uh, you are a great film director first, but also a great female director. Yes. How long do you hope it will be before we're not just being amazed at seeing a huge number of female directors being incorporated into the mainstream? Well, with the way we're going, I doubt it will be anytime soon. The numbers haven't budged very much, particularly in the feature world. Um, so uh, I will continue to talk about it as long as I need to. But the biggest thing that I do is make friends with every female director that I come across, every non-binary LGBT director. And we kind of form a little bit of a sisterhood and alliance because I know the truth is that I'm standing here because of all of the women who've come before me who pushed this door open, and now I'm getting to benefit from that, but we need more of us up here, no doubt. Extremely nostalgic and delightful movie. Thank you. What's your experience working with this amazing cast? It was an, a very emotional, beautiful experience. We had a wonderful shoot. I'm sure on red carpets everyone says that, but it's not true, but this really was. and. Um, I just, we all felt a sense of responsibility to Fred Rogers and that we had to do it right. And we, we took that really seriously, so it was a group of really hardworking people. Fred Rogers is a legendary television um, uh, host. He hosted a, a, a children's TV show, and um, his message uh, of compassion and kindness um, resonated outside of just the work that he was doing with kids, but um, into the lives of adults and parents. And so. When Noah and I were setting out to, to write a movie about Fred Rogers, we realized that he was actually not a great subject for a straight biopic because there was no great uh, moment in his life where he became, he was, he was really always uh, this person. What we found was he was involved in the lives of so many people who you would just meet casually along the way. And one of these people was the journalist Tom Juneau. We read his article um, that was in Esquire magazine we were inspired by it, and um, we ended up reading correspondence that he had had with Fred Rogers over decades, um, and that was our movie for us. Okay, and um, in terms of the, the festival experience, it's premiering here at uh, TIFF. Um, is it your first time here? Is it uh, brand new to you, or is it, are you uh, veterans of this uh, fantastic festival? Oh, it's brand new. Can't you see it on our faces? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we're thrilled. We've been working on this for you know close to 10 years, so to have it premiere here at TIFF is just a dream. It's kind of hard to believe it's even happening. You know. Are you guys satisfied with the end result and the performance of Tom Hanks? He, Are you kidding? It's Tom Hanks. He's amazing. <laughs> but he also, he really, he really did the, uh, he did the work to transform into this part. It's not, uh, he was, he really found something. He really was able to capture the essence of, uh, of Fred Rogers and bring this person to life. 
Well, when we when we first um, started working on this story, what we realized was we had an opportunity to reintroduce audiences to Fred Rogers through an adult lens, through an adult perspective. We're so used to seeing him through a child's eyes, and this was a chance to tell his story of what he really believed for all people, which is that everybody deserves to be loved, that everybody deserves kindness, and everybody has value. And that to us was the most exciting thing. So we're able to not just introduce you to Fred, but introduce you to his radical philosophy of kindness. And that's really what's behind the story. Excellent. And obviously, Tom Hanks p portrays this person on screen. Um, possibly a uh, director question, but it could be for you guys as well. Was he always the number one? Was there anybody else, or was it always Tom Hanks? And what does he bring to this film? I Do you have a better boy idea? Boy. I was yeah. going to play him. And then, <laughs> and then, and then you know, he was he always yeah, so that was, yeah. Then, yeah, he I was mean, not just number one, he was the only one. <laughs> yeah. he's, yeah. the, he's the right person for it. He worked really hard on it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think you have to remember, I think people think, oh, well, that's natural. But he put a lot of work into becoming that character. Um, and I think it's pretty exciting when you see it. And it was amazing to watch him transform into Fred. You know, the first time we saw him get into costume and start to become Fred. It was exciting. Yeah, goosebumps yeah. Yeah. On, that, on that set, yeah. Well, before the shoot started, we had to sort of go and recreate a lot of the music from the original Mr. Rogers show that was going to be performed on set by Tom. So that was a good entry point for me to get just sort of dive into the world of all of this wonderful music that existed on the show and sort of use that as a jumping off point. So the score that we built from there on out sort of took roots in the jazz world that that came from and we hopefully expanded out on it and made it bigger and grand and emotional and all those things it needed to be. Fantastic and obviously you're working with your sister on this one. Yes. Um, what's that like? Uh, can I speak honestly? No, I'm just kidding. She's just there. I will just remind you. It's, it's wonderful. I think it's really great because we already have a language as close siblings of being able to communicate about you know, these ethereal sort of tangential issues about music that are so hard to pin down. I think as brother and sister, it's really easy to sort of say, I need this, help me get there. And so I think having the language of, you know, a brother and sister who love each other helps us get to that goal a little more easily. But I think that the thing that is, I don't know if it's surprising or not surprising, but the thing about Fred is that he was always that guy. He, there, was never, there was never a moment that I can recall that he, I mean, he got, I mean, he was human, so he got angry like everybody else, but he never did anything else but look for the best in people. And, you know, he was, it wasn't like he, you know, took off that red sweater and turned into someone else. He, like, took off that red sweater and turned into the guy who was wearing the blue coat. And he was always, he was always had that level of, of kindness and humility and et cetera, et cetera. Have you seen the film yet? I have. I saw it in July. Okay, and how does the finished result with Tom Hanks playing Mr. Rogers compare to, to the man himself? Um, I think that, I think that the, the thing that makes Tom's portrayal special is that Tom has his, his own kindness and his own gentleness and his own goodness that he can bring to that role. He doesn't, you know, he's not a, a mean guy who's like on a lark playing a kind one. He's a kind one who is somehow um, I, I mean I think giving a statement on on what what kindness really is hi friends I'm Marielle Heller it's my privilege and honor to be here to share this movie with you for the first time in the world oh, I'm gonna take this moment in for a moment I want to um, welcome to the stage some of the people who made this movie with me our wonderful producers, Peter Seraf, Yuri Henley, Leah Holzer, and Mark Turtletop. Our incredible writers whose script truly made me want to make this movie, Noah Harpster and Micah Fitzerman Blue. The incredible writer, Tom Juneau, whose Esquire article is the inspiration for this movie. And our wonderful cast, Enrico Colantoni, Susan Kalechi Watson, Matthew Reese, Tom Hanks. Sorry, I gotta do it slower. Enrico Colantoni, Susan Kalechi Watson, Tom. 
Tom Hanks, Matthew Reese, and Chris Cooper. And I want to take a moment for everyone who's out there in the audience who worked on this movie, please stand up. I wanted to bring you all up to the audience, and I've been told that I can't do that. So what I'm going to do instead is say, up there, I see you. Please stand up. And I know you're all here, so please stand up. This movie was a labor of love made by so many people who poured their hearts and soul into it, I can't even tell you. I don't want to take too long up here, but I just want to um, say in this moment where we're all vying for awards and we're at this fancy, beautiful film festival for vying for reviews and fancy awards, I want to remind us um, of why we really do this with a Fred Rogers quote that I hope I won't butcher. Um, it's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that what we do is more important than what we are, when of course the opposite is true. What we are ultimately determines what we do. Thank you. This has been such a privilege. I hope you enjoy the movie, and thank you to everyone here who made this movie possible. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys!